Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for May 12th of 2023. Um, so yeah, welcome. If you are here live, please do. Um, you're welcome to drop in on chat here. Uh, we always have a group of really wonderful individuals that can certainly assist and clarify things. And then if you do have questions and you're here live, please do drop it on the questions tab so I don't miss it. Um, and you are always welcome to send in an email if you have questions that you'd like to be answered on the tools that we create here or the energy work that we do. And so let's see. Um, and if you are watching after the fact on YouTube, you're always welcome to join us live by simply signing up for the newsletter at twistedsage.com. So anyway, nice, beautiful rainy day here. Sorry, I'm just kind of getting myself together here this morning. Um, I was just spending some time listing some of the key pendants, um, which I'll tell you about here in just a moment. We have some sales on those key pendants. One of my favorite wares. Um, you know, I'd like to keep one in my vehicle too, because if I'm ever out in traffic anywhere, if I ever go to the cities, wherever that is, um, I'll just spend the key pendant and it just clears energy. Not only is it bringing everything into balance, aligned and grounding, but it is clearing energies all around and they love to spin. So anyway, we'll do some check in here. Hey, Christine from Oz. I'm glad you can make it today. And Connie from Maine. Ronaldo. Hey, Hampton, Virginia. Victoria from Northern Cali. Um, let's see. So the website, I don't know if any of you were browsing the website over the past week. We, we might have had some <laughs> down things at the moment. We're still working on menus because we're still transferring websites and we're going to make, we have a really beautiful new website envisioned. And so look for that here coming later this summer. We're going to have some simple, easy ways to navigate the website. So let's see. Hey, David from Telford, UK. So let's see the key pendants. Um, the key pendants we've we recently made the 3.0 version, as I call it. It's a little bit thicker gauge, has a hole in the center versus the lighter gauged original pendant. Um, so we have the originals. I just listed these on the website and I'll still do some photos here later this morning. But the original key pendants are 188 versus the 222 on the standard key pendants. Now we have a few of these of the 3.0 prototypes when we were creating them that, um, you know, some of them, there's little grind marks in them that we've done our best to cover up. They're just very mild aesthetic issues. These ones are actually going for 177 just because we want to get them into people's hands. We don't want them just sitting around the studio here. Um, but you know, we're pretty particular about the quality of the tools that we send out. And so, you know, that these are still a phenomenal, beautiful key pendant. I mean, you can't even tell that there is any aesthetic issues with this pendant, you know, when you're wearing it, um, and energetically, they're all the same. I just happen to like this heavier gauge version. And usually when you wear it, it sings. Yeah, I like this version. So anyway, um, <clears throat> those are both up on the website under a key pendants. And so, gosh, they're going to be a limited quantity of what we have for the discounted for 177, as well as the originals at 188. And of course, we have the, the standard version, the 3.0 back up on the website again. So anyway. Let's see what else. Well, gosh, let's go into the heart space this morning. That's probably the, 
probably the best place to start. So here we go. If you've never gone with us before, this is a simple three breath technique. It is a great thing to practice. We're going to take an actual breath and we're going to be using our imagination, visualization, intentions of connecting heart to heart with the earth, heart to heart with creation, soul, God, however you see and say that. And we're going to simply bring those both together within. That moves the consciousness from the head back into the sacred space of the heart. So here we go. <clears throat> Simply closing the eyes, putting your attention to the physical heart. Imagining taking that breath from the earth, breathing in that unconditional loving, supporting energy of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. And just allow yourself to ground in, to connect with the earth allowing her to envelop you in that deep, deep connection with the earth. Beautiful. The next breath is breathing the light of you, connecting heart to heart with you as creator, source, soul, God, breathing in that light into the heart. Allowing yourself to expand. The third breath is breathing in the energies of both the earth and of creation together. Breathing them both together within the heart. Swirling and twirling those energies together with you. And allowing them to go right back out. So you are that conduit, that connection between heaven and earth. <clears throat> Wonderful. All right. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, let's see. I had some questions from the Internet. Oh, actually, I want to share a book with you guys. Journey of the Angels. Gosh, I don't know if this is backwards on your screen or not, but Journey of the Angels. Um, it's on Amazon. It's the Tobias materials from Jeffrey Hoppe. Um, and this is the um, Jeffrey Hoppe. He's the one who channels, channeled Tobias, one of the Ascended Masters. He's um, and Tobias left here years ago. And now then um, the Crimson Circle, as they call their their group, um, Jeffrey now channels Adama St. Germain and it, the material really resonates because a lot of the work that we've been doing with consciousness, with the soul, our understandings of our light, of divinity, um, a lot of these understandings and things that we had been doing, um, you know, here, myself, my, my sister, especially, um, it resonates. It, it goes together with what they've been channeling here at the Crimson Circle. But Journey of the Angels has been a really profound, profound story. Um, it's also available on their website as like a um, like a three day workshop that they recorded in two thousand nine. But basically, Journey of the Angels talks about how we left Source. And we came through as soul and how we have these incarnations as a soul being for experience and wisdom. And, you know, this whole concept that we have with the wisdom rings, the wisdom wands, just these, the wisdom energetics that we're putting into the newer tools is that this wisdom energetics is simply holding a space and allowing us to more easily... <clears throat> pardon me, more easily release old traumas, old lifetimes, and release those to the soul to be brought back in as wisdom, light, and consciousness. And so there is a lot of the concepts that I talk about that you will, that resonate with us and that we've already been doing, or else it helps to tie together those points that we've been working on through the years 
Um, this is really great material. <clears throat> so anyway, it's like, I think the newer book is like 12 bucks or something like that on Amazon. I think you can get it on Kindle. And again, you can also go to the website, uh, their website and get, um, the whole audio video, which is probably like, I don't know, 12 hours long, something like that. Anyway, it explains a lot of what's going on and where we are at as, uh, as, as sold beings in this universe. It really helps to put things in perspective of what the heck we're doing here, who we are and, and where we're going and what we're doing. Uh, it really helps to tie a lot of things together. So highly recommended book. So anyway, um, the questions from the website, let me see where my phone is here. As you notice, we got the chamber on the floor back here. We are getting ready to put together a new chamber for the Dowsing Association. Well, that we're going to take to the American Society Dowsers in New York here coming up the first weekend of June. And the new chamber is, is going to hopefully hold this, some of the new realizations that we've been working with. And simply, um, gosh, this past week has been really phenomenal for some of the understandings when Brenda and I got together, Brenda, my sister, because um, basically we're seeing that there are these old patterns that keep coming up, whether they are, you know, mental patterns, thoughts that come up and, and it's like, man, I thought we've, we've really dug in and we've released all of this stuff. And why, why do these patterns show back up? In looking in at that, it's almost like, for me, how it presented to me was like, we have this structure, it's organic around us. And it's like, there's scar tissue. Um, the structure is very translucent. It's almost like a molting. It's, it's like we're molting our, our old, our old everything, because it's like, we have this, this field and this is our reality creation. And usually within this field, there's all of our old traumas, all of our unfinished business, our lifetimes, usually just, you know, the, 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 the emotionally charged things and so many things that we are not even consciously aware of, such as the old lifetime traumas, other lifetimes, soul aspects, all the stuff. Um, so anyway, that's in what you call like our orbit. It, it's in our field and we've been doing all this work of clearing and releasing those things in our field, bringing those into wisdom, um, light and consciousness. And so there's almost like this, that old structure, it's almost like there is scar tissue is how it presents to me on this structure to where our light comes in. Light and consciousness is what patterns energy. So light is simply energy. Um, light comes in <clears throat> consciousness patterns energy to be all of our physical creation and that includes our traumas our aches our pains our our life situations everything and so <clears throat> so excuse me if i'm losing anybody here that's really wanting to get into the tools just kind of wanted to share some of this consciousness work that we're doing and that we're putting into the new chamber that we're creating and so basically we're seeing that it's it's releasing those old the old scar tissue the old structures that as light comes in and and we are intending you know our light is intending to come into creation for all this beauty and abundance and everything else in our world well it hits the scar tissue and then it reflects it refracts off of there and then comes into creation something a little bit distorted and so it's clearing these distortions, I guess, is the simple, easy way to say this, is that we've been working on clearing those distortions from old stuff. <clears throat> we've cleared the experiences within here and brought that to wisdom already, but there's still a little, little bit of distortion that we're still cleaning up. And we're really, <clears throat> gosh, my sincere apologies. We're really working on clearing those distortions out of our fields and that's what i hope this new ascension chamber is going to also assist with us we've also been working with something um gosh my sister called it a nothing space basically it's a space that's held that's kind of like a blank canvas so again 
<clears throat> I guess. <clears throat> I'm probably not going to talk about this whole concept anymore because I don't want to lose anybody and it goes deep and we have to really, really get in there. So anyway, you guys, we will jump in here. Uh, Catalin. Oh, thank you, Jennifer, for helping get, um, get Catalin to the questions tab. So our first question, and we'll go back to the internet questions. Does the key pendant help with geopathic stress and EMFs? If so, does it transform those energies into health positive energies or does it neutralize them? Uh, on from Romania. Glad to have you here. So the key pendant is one that is transforming EMFs. So basically all the tools that we create here at Twisted Sage are harmonizing tools. They're creating such a harmonious field that when you have like a cell phone that is producing all of these discordant, disharmonious fields, when you put the cell tab, and again, these are just for show, the one for your electrical panel, the one for computers, but just the cell phone tab or any of the tools, a Wi-Fi ring, your key pendant, the tools we create will take that discordant field and it will harmonize it. It will turn it into a beneficial field because everything in physical reality is electromagnetics. Our heart is this big electromagnetic generator Every cell and molecule has an electromagnetic field as do planets, plants, everything carries an electromagnetic field, but all the natural ones are mostly harmonious, beneficial fields. And it's those discordant fields that come in and interact and kind of knock off and train your harmonious field into a discordant field. So the key pendant too is doing the same thing for electromagnetics but the key pendant is more working with your field in turning your field into that balanced aligned connected harmonious strong field so when we see that people that have severe sensitivities to electromagnetics it's usually that they're so knocked off kilter that it's, it's easy to bring something in and just totally topple them. If you see what I'm saying, a discordant field, it doesn't take a very strong discordant field to knock them off kilter. And then when, when your bioelectric body is not balanced, aligned, centered, harmonious, flowing and working well, that leads to all of the physical, mental, emotional issues of electromagnetic hypersensitivity. So, the key pendant simply allows you to be the transformer, the harmonizer of not only discordant EMFs, but all the energies because everything is energy. And so it simply allows you to stand in your center alignment as do most all of the tools. You know, the, the quantum heart coil pendants are fantastic ones too, because they create a toroidal field, the tube torus that really brings everything into center and alignment. So, um, so yes, geopathic stress, EMFs, all of it. Now the key pendant too, was actually the first tool that I created to where I never saw the ghosts, the waywards, the, the disincarnate energies that I would usually have attached to me. The key pendant is the first pendant that we created that I no longer would see the ghosts, the waywards, because as a, a ghost would come into your field, their soul would come in to activate the sacred heart and simply take them home. It would do the healing, connecting, releasing, and just simply take that aspect of the soul back to soul. So, um, so yeah, the, the key pendants are really amazing. They're one that's not for most, all of us. It's one that when you put it on, you're not, not like, Oh wow, everything changed. You know, um, 
it's more subtle. It is working on such higher levels that for most of us, it's kind of imperceivable. But when you take it off, um, you may notice it. Or when you are wearing it for a while and you take it off and then you put it back on after a day, then you'll notice it too. Because um, as all the tools that we create, basically when you are wearing them, they are creating a harmonious field where it entrains your field to be in that harmonious, grounded, aligned state as well. And again, we call these training wheels because they do help us step into that alignment and that connection where we can then begin to, to um, you know, connect and align and hold those spaces ourselves. Um, hey, Dr. Dream. Good to see you here, brother man. Um, let's see. Hey, Valerie from Colorado. Hey, Nancy. Good to see you this morning. <clears throat> oh, yeah. No, please keep keep asking questions. You are certainly welcome to ask as many questions if you like here. Um, do we happen to have a pendant that shields one's aura? I'm asking because I easily pick up energetic crap from the environment and from other people's aura. Being around people makes me uneasy, jittery, and anxious. I need a pendant or something. Okay, so basically the the tool that we usually suggest and is it's really a fantastic pendant is the quantum heart coil pendants now this is also our least expensive pendant 44 bucks uh 36 dollars just for the copper coil um we also have these wonderful new gold plated silver chains that work well with the copper coils and then we have these in silver the um the 0.99 fine silver with sterling tube and so they're they're an affordable one but these are one of our more powerful pendants for those with sensitivities to electromagnetics to those um, we call it an empath filter as well because um like you mentioned here uh catalin is that you you re as an empath you receive all the crap now the empath filter is basically creating this toroidal field around you it creates this very harmonious field that will still allow in the information, but not all the crap. It doesn't allow in everybody's junk unless it's your choice to really receive that. Um, because these tools, again, do not violate your free will choice, but they are an empath filter in that if you don't want everybody's crap in your field, then it's not going to come in it filters that for you because being an empath truly is a phenomenal gift and we are all truly empaths it's just we're uncovering chiseling away all of those protections that we've created from feeling um from having those innate qualities that we as a human carry so anyway um yeah, the quantum heart coil pendant is is a fantastic one. But yes, any of the pendants we create is also going to be doing this. Let's see. Andre, I just received the Divine Earth Alchemy in the practitioner size. Do you have the grounding ring in smaller sizes? Um, no. So the Divine Earth Alchemy set is the 23-inch wisdom ring and the 23-inch grounding ring. Now, the grounding ring that we have is that's the only size that we're currently creating. Um, someday I believe we're going to put this into some pendants, but basically that grounding ring isn't doing all of that higher work. It's not connecting the soul. It's not doing the clearing, holding space for like what the wisdom ring does any of that. The grounding ring is simply connecting your heart to the heart of the earth or to whoever happens to be standing in its field. So we originally made that ring for people who were using radionics <clears throat> because a radionic machine, um, this transmitter with all the dials and everything, these radionic broadcast machines had to be grounded. And so for people who lived in the cities or in apartments or wherever, um, they couldn't necessarily ground their machines. So we were using this grounding ring that you put around your equipment and it grounds it with the heart of the earth. And I don't know why we did not think of this sooner because it is pretty fantastic for 
those who have issues grounding or those who, you know, because when you're grounding, you sleep a lot better as well. So the grounding rings are something that you can utilize instead of like earthing mats, um, you know, plugging your sheets into an electrical outlet for the grounding, whatever it is that, that people do for grounding. Um, there's a lot of things out there, but the, the grounding ring is completely that heart to heart, heart of you, heart of the earth connection, which is an electromagnetic connection. And it's also obviously a thorough spiritual. Um, so the grounding ring is one that we will continue to play with and make different uh, tools with it. Uh, Rochelle, do you still have a small lightweight key pendant? Oh, yes. Um, and here in the, that was one of the first things we discussed was we have the key pendants now. We have, you know, our 3.0 version, which is the one um, that's been out for a little while. We now just, I just listed this morning before the webinar, we listed what we have left of the original lightweight key. And so these ones are 188. We also have the um, a discounted version of the 3.0, which are 177. They just have minor aesthetic of details. But yes, so we do still have the smaller lightweight key pendants. Now we also have the wings of talk, which is in that smaller circle. It looks, you know, it can be confused as a key pendant because it still has the eight tines in there. Um, the wings of talk pendant is still one that's available as well. I really do love the key pendants though. Definitely my favorite. Uh, Rochelle is a Wi-Fi. If a Wi-Fi router is plugged into electricity, but does not have an ethernet cable connected to it, does the signal that the router send out contain the EMF that we would want to alleviate? Oh, so basically a Wi-Fi router, if you simply unplug your input into that Wi-Fi router, the Wi-Fi router, I'm assuming, is still going to be putting out a signal because your computer or your phone will still read that there's a Wi-Fi signal, that, but there's just no data being transferred. So for most routers that I know of, they still put out a signal whether your cord is plugged into them or not. Um, and so, of course, you can use a Wi-Fi ring with your Wi-Fi router and simply place that Wi-Fi ring on top of the router, under it, on the antenna, anywhere within that router's immediate field, and it will be harmonizing that transmission. You can use any of the rings, a water ring. You can take your wisdom wand, place it there. Any of the tools that you place on that Wi-Fi router will alleviate any of those discordant energies. Now, if you have a tensor field generator, one of the spherical forms, and you have a tensor field generator anywhere in your home, in your car, this will also alleviate any of the harmful effects of discordant Wi-Fi's. Um, Let's see, Nancy, um, please talk about the smart smart meter tool. So here on my phone, we have our cell phone tab. This one is the Alchemist tab for computers and more. This particular disc right here is for your household electric. Now this one has the sticky back on it so that you can stick it onto the electrical panel. We also have this same tool, the smart meter remedial remediation disc with a plug-in back. It's just simply a plastic prong plug that you can stick into any outlet and it harmonizes the electromagnetic field. So the um, it used to be a long time ago when we were making the Slim Sperling's 144 megahertz sacred qubit tensor rings. The rings would only create the rings would only harmonize what was within the column of energy that comes out of the rings. So it just shines a straight column of light out. Now, when we were making the, when the smart meters first came out, we were making rings that went around the smart meter and anything within this field would then be harmonized, the transmissions to that smart meter. Through time, as we began to work with the etheric templates, we started to work with the consciousness of electricity 
the consciousness of the copper wire, the consciousness of the earth and the earth elementals, since all of your household electric is also grounded into the earth. Once we begin to create what we call the etheric templates and we put all of these higher potentials of working with the consciousness of electricity and the earth and the earth elementals and the copper all into those etheric templates. What happened was, is that when you put your tensor ring over that smart meter and we've had professionals, dowsers also, you know, look at this and there's actually a video out there. Gosh, I think it might be on our website where one of our friends, um, professional dowser was dowsing that and first sent that in to us where she was showing that she put um, the smart meter disc onto the um, the electrical transformer. So those are the, usually those green boxes that you see sitting out on your lawn or your neighbor's lawn. <clears throat> and then if you live in more of a rural area where you have overhead power lines, the transformer is that large cylinder that is up on top of the poles. So these transformers, um, our friend would, from a dowsing, she would take and put one of our discs onto the transformer and she would douse before and after. So before she found that there were in her dowsing scale, these negative hundreds that were coming out of all of your electrical panels and the, and the meters because the, the electrical panels and a meter creates an electromagnetic field about five and a half to six feet out from that meter. And it is a very discordant field. So your electrical meters, whether they're a smart meter or an analog meter still creates a discordant, strong electromagnetic field, five and a half to six feet out from it. Then is, then the smart meters are simply producing a Wi-Fi transmission, which you know, it's, it's not a huge thing, but you know, it really became a scare at the time. <clears throat> and so with, um, with the, with the ring that she placed onto that transformer box, it would then harmonize the electromagnetic fields that were found in every building connected to that transformer. It would raise it into the positive hundreds on her dowsing scale. So it went from negative thousands to positive hundreds with one single disc on that electrical transformer. That's when we seen that it was flowing back up and back from the stream. So then you can place this disc into your household electric plug-in or onto your um, fuse panel in your home. And it will harmonize the electromagnetic field, taking it from on a thousand scale from negative thousands to positive hundreds in everybody's electrical box or meter that is connected to your transformer. So basically simply saying is that if you live in an apartment building and you place this disc into the plug or on your electrical panel, it is going to harmonize all of the electromagnetic fields from the household current in the entire apartment complex. Now this is kind of a limited thing using these discs on the household electric. It's not going to take care of your Wi-Fi router or appliances that you plug into your household electric because those appliances will transform and disharmonize that harmonious field that's flowing. But it will take that discordant field that is in your meters and in your electrical boxes and it'll harmonize that. And so that it is no longer non-beneficial to be within that field. You know, because most of these electrical panels are placed in people's bedrooms for some reason. So, yeah, just watch for your electrical panel. And, um, you know, if you spend a lot of time within that five and a half to six feet, I would totally use one of the discs. So, um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's about all for the smart meter. Thank you for that question, Nancy. Andre, if you got your, if you have the Ascension Pyramid with two of the Alchemist sets, if I added the alchemist earth set to it as well, would that mean I have the same energy three times or is it recreating something more? Okay. So basically the question is adding rings together and how much that amplifies things. So in, in this question was how to do with the, the Ascension pyramids, which come with that set of three alchemist rings. And if you add another set of three rings, what does that do? It does amplify things. 
Now, what we see is, is that when you add one ring to another, that it is amplifying the field by about 24%. Now, energetically, that quantum field is going to be the same whether you have one ring, two rings, 20 rings. But there is a potency factor in what I would say the potency is more of how it is felt on the physical, that it creates a, a more tangible field for this physical plane for us to perceive that field. So people who don't feel energy as much, the heavier gauge rings, like the practitioner rings, um, those heavier gauge rings can be perceived more on that physical. And so that's why we make the practitioner rings in that heavy gauge is so that the body can actually, so you can feel those fields with your body. So again, with the Ascension Pyramid and you're adding another set of rings to it, it is simply increasing the potency, which is how you perceive it in the physical. But it is not increasing, hmm, what word would you use, the power of it? It's, it's basically containing the same exact field, the same exact etheric templates, all the potentials that are held within that field is going to be exactly the same. So it's not increasing the power of it by bringing you in more potentials and bringing more harmonization through. It is simply making it more physically, more tangibly potent. So I hope that answers the question there. Um, yeah, I'm going to step back to chat here. Yeah, and again, my apologies. I really don't watch the chat much. So if you are here live, please do drop your questions on the questions tab. Um, let's see, using precious stones and jewels in combinations with the tensor technology. So yes, stones and crystals, the consciousness of crystals love the tensor fields. Not only are the tensor fields and crystals amplifying each other, but the tensor fields are cleaning and clearing a crystal. So instead of bathing your crystals in the moonlight or salt or running energy to them to clear them, however you clear your crystal, selenite, whatever, using a tensor ring is phenomenal because it is clearing the crystals. Now, the wisdom energetics, which are the alchemist sets or the wisdom rings or the wisdom wands, any of the wisdom energetics are bringing in the consciousness of the crystal more than it ever has on the earth before the same with water the same with people the same with plants the wisdom ring is seen as bringing in your consciousness more so when you're working with a crystal and you use the wisdom rings with it or the wisdom wand it is making that crystal shine it is bringing in its light it is embodying more of its light its consciousness than it ever has before pretty amazing working with crystals with these tools now we we don't make products we have made products in the beginning that utilize crystals with them but um we really don't anymore it, it's something that it is up to the user to utilize crystals with these tensor fields now the tensor field generators are great ones to use crystals with too um, because the crystal when it is within this generator within the sphere that consciousness and energy and information of the crystal is broadcast throughout that whole area that the, that the generator covers. Now, that's not to say that the energies, so one of the things about the crystal kingdom, the etheric templates, the higher dimensional aspects of the tools that we create, what we call the etheric templates in this higher dimensional space, Within the etheric templates of all of the tensor tools that we create, you can find the consciousness, frequencies, and properties of all the crystal kingdoms of the planet. That means that if you have a tensor ring and you simply want to bring through the energies of rose quartz and amethyst, go into the heart space like we did in the beginning of the video, sit with the ring and say, okay, Bring me rose quartz and amethyst. 
that consciousness frequencies and properties will come through the ring. Same with all the plant kingdoms, all the rays of light. You want the violet flame from St. Germain? Ask for it here. <sighs> wow. And it comes through. So yeah, smart tools. Um, let's see. And so, yeah, it's just um, basically just some, I was looking over on chat. So, yes, wearing, you know, your pendants with the stone. So you don't necessarily have to put, if you're using a quantum heart coil pendant where it's creating that toroidal field, you can wear this pendant and another pendant with a stone or a crystal, and they're going to work together. You don't necessarily have to have it you know, glued to your coil or anything like that. But wearing the coil pendants with stones, it's going to do that. That same thing is going to connect with those fields. Now, a lot of people do wear like the one and a half inch wisdom ring, um, you know, because I have a lot of really wonderful wire wraps. Some of my friends that are on here, um, I have some wonderful pieces from them. And when I wear my wonderful wire wrap jewelry, I'll usually use like that one and a half inch wisdom ring and just wear that so that it sits together. Um, because those wisdom rings, we have the adjustable leather lanyard. So you can usually adjust that and sit it so that your stone would ride right within the ring in that. So if you're using a single ring that creates that column of light, it really is a great way to utilize a stone or a crystal is having that within that one and a half inch wisdom ring. Um, let's see. And the Taurus pendant, a question about that. Um, so yes, the Taurus pendant is again, oh gosh, I moved all my Tauruses, but the Taurus kind of like what's hanging up here. It's the two seed of life's ratcheted to create the toroidal field. That is what we call the Taurus. Now with that Taurus pendant, um, it's a little bit more petite than the divine I am activator pendant. That Taurus pendant is one that is also creating that toroidal field, that field that spins. It goes like the earth magnetic fields, but it goes both ways and it spins. The Taurus is the, it's, it just, a Taurus is the way energy flows within molecules, organs, um, galaxies, planets, so the Taurus is simply the way energy flows, the electromagnetic flow of energy in all of physical creation. So your heart, again, is that huge electromagnetic generator. It is creating a Taurus, a toroidal field that's about six feet across. And it is all the different fields that when you are sensitive, hypersensitive to electromagnetics, your fields just aren't aligned. They're just not really flowing beautifully. So the Taurus pendant is one that when you wear it, it is, it, it's aligning everything. It's harmonizing your field very well. It is a very phenomenal harmonizer of your field. But when you wear it on your heart, it also allows the flow out and the flow in. Um, it's creating that flow also out the back. So it opens up the heart and the back as well. The Taurus pendant is, it's just a beautiful energy. Um, in the Taurus pendant that we create, it's basically bringing your light in more and helping your light and train and body into the physical. You know, all of our tools do that, but the Taurus pendant just has that really special flow of that toroidal field. Um, I guess I'm not sure what else to say about the Taurus pendant besides it. it and it's a beautiful creation too. Um, Let's see. Uh, just to verify, the original alchemist set is the same energy as the divine earth alchemy set. No. Um, so the alchemist set that we have. So the three alchemy rings, which are the harmonizer, the chalice, and the divine I am, all come together to create what we call the wisdom field. So this wisdom energetic 
that we have in just a single wisdom ring now. So that wisdom ring is one of the rings that comes with the divine earth alchemy set is one of them is the wisdom ring. And the other ring that comes with the divine earth alchemy is simply the grounding ring. So the earth alchemy together or sorry, the alchemist set together creates the wisdom ring. And then the divine earth alchemy is the wisdom ring and the grounding ring. And this is also part of what we are doing with the website is we are going to simplify a lot of these tools and we're probably going to discontinue a few tools because we really want to simplify everything and we'll still probably carry a lot of these things and they'll be in our historical pages because the alchemist set is really still a fantastic set because you can access these three energies on their own, such as the chalice energy, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal energy on its own. But we only have it available um, right now within this alchemist set. So yes, apologies, on Andre, for the confusion of all the names. And it's just because we've we've been just growing at an exponential rate, especially, you know, well, God, I'm not even going to confine the years. We've just been growing at an exponential rate, at an exponential rate. And so we keep adding to the tools and um and so, yeah, that's where everything has gotten kind of complicated because we have so many things in this growth that we've created and we really are working on simplifying. Um, Ronaldo, I really love the consciousness classes. Can we have a day tailored for us who want to resonate with this new paradigm? <clears throat> Yes. Yeah, so the, uh, yep, yeah, that's really been on my mind too, is to recreate some classes, um, for those who just really want to get into the consciousness work, you know, cause those are times where I could really explain a lot of this stuff that I started to hear with Brenda and the blank canvas and some of the work that we're currently doing. So I have certainly considered creating another class um, on twistedsage.vhx.tv. Again, twistedsage.vhx.tv. We have um, the Soul Alchemy class that we all participated in. It was a paid class. And I think that um, in order to pay for that platform, I still need to, I need to do more classes on there. So I think that I will offer, um, you know, just an inexpensive like 22 bucks or whatever, um, commitment into that class and start doing some of these things again on working with some of the concepts of consciousness and the tools that consciousness tools that we're personally working with and that we're finding and putting into the tools that we create. And so I would love to actually create a class again for, for a lot of us who really want to dive into that consciousness work. So yes, uh, Ronaldo, thank you for, for bringing that up. Hey, Samson, can you share about the new Ascension pyramid? And is it a similar combination of tools as the current pyramids? Um, so the, so we're not actually making a new ascension pyramid. We're, we are redesigning our horizontal uh, bed that has a massage table with the 12 rings that come around you. That, so you lay on the bed, 12 rings come around you. So this, this old bed had a torus at the top and a giant flower of life, fruit of life, expanded version of the flower expanded at the feet. Um, and it was, again, made in some of the older energies. So the new table that we're creating is an updated energetics. The, the 44 inch rings that are going to come around you. We are intending to be held holding you in this no space place, that blank canvas of creation. And then the Taurus on each end is going to be a, a Taurus that again is working on that physical so much as well as the mind. And so, Samson, your other uh, part of your question was um, talk a little bit more about the release of the scar tissue consciousness. And that, too, is what I really feel this new 
this new table, this new chamber is going to be, is that it's going to allow us to release all of the, like I described that scar tissue, the, the old structures, that pattern, your light as it comes in and distorts your light, which distorts creation. And so I really feel this new table is going to allow people to step in there and to release those distortion fields to where we can bring in our light in its purest form and manifest in such a new way. You know, um, it's exciting. It gives me goosebumps and yeah, super, super excited to see where this is going. And, you know, it's, it's a, something that humanity is already going down this path. It's just that the tools that we create and the spaces and fields that we create simply allow people to access it with a lot more quickness, grace, and ease. Um, as you know, there's a lot of people on the planet that might not access some of these energies that you're already in, that you're doing with consciousness, with the tools yourself. There's a lot of people on the planet that might not access these for who knows, lifetimes, decades. And so, um, yeah, it's, it takes us down another rabbit hole. That's why I appreciate everybody who's here and everybody who uses the tools and everybody who's doing the consciousness work because it is, it is each of us who do the individual work, which is going to change the collective because we're all connected to the collective. And so the more that we want to change all the world around us, the more we have to step in and change ourselves, bring in our light more, clear all the distortion fields within ourselves so that we can shine a brighter, clearer light into the collective by simply just existing. And that's really the answer to shifting the collective is to just exist in that higher light, um, clean, clear, balanced. And I don't mean to sound all woo woo. Um, Rochelle, after listening to your answer, I did a search on your website for the Taurus pendant and it's not there. So I assume there's another name you use for the Taurus pendant. Oh, a uh, Taurus is in, um, and not the bull Taurus, the tube Taurus. Um, it is T O R U S is the Taurus pendant. And let me actually just double check on the website. To make sure that that is the name of this pendant because, yeah, it's simply called Taurus Pendant, and that is T O R U S Taurus. All right. Um, and Nancy, um, can we talk more about the Badar coil? So, the Badar coil, uh, for some reason, I don't have mine sitting here. Okay taped it on the underside of the massage table bed the other day. Uh, so the, the, the Badar coil, it is simply an energy pump. It's, it's a bipolar coil that they use in radionics and it's in a little plastic dish about three inches. It's a great pocket sized piece, makes a great coaster. But the Badar coil is one that we got from our friends at Kelly research technologies who make, um, radionics machines. And again, it is simply just an energy pump. It just moves energy. But when we add our specially designed tensor ring, we energetically design this ring to harmonize the energy from that energy pump, to harmonize that energy, and to also use that as a carrier wave for all of these other phenomenal energies, such as the wisdom field. And that Betar coil was the first of our tools that we saw bringing in all these little packets of light that are simply higher potentials. How I would always describe this Betar coil is as if, if you're using it with like frankincense and frankincense oil has a, a potentials, a, a group of potentials, like let's say in a bandwidth this large, it can do all this healing work and all this other things for skin and, and, what, whatever all of those descriptions are for, for that essential oil. So you take that frankincense oil and you place it on the Badar coil. What it does is it shifts the amount of potentials that can come through because it is bringing more of the consciousness of that oil into embodiment. 
And that simply means that it is bringing more potentials, more light, more consciousness. And so those beta coils are doing that with water or anything that you put within that field. So I know a lot of you use it with your food. You'll either put that beta coil under your plate of food or you'll, else you'll just use it and just simply run your energy over the food. And when you're doing that, all the tools that we use couples with our intention and our light. So any anything like you use a tensor ring or the beta coil and you are simply shining it onto your food you're ha you you have that intention because you're working with the food so there's obviously an intention behind you working with that food and if we think about it that intention is probably sending that love and gratitude to all the plants animals minerals the water the people who help make it to bring it to you the land that it came from everything so you're sending your gratitude into that food and you're you know your thanks and your gratitude and your love for the entire process of for coming into being and being on your plate right here so you're sending your love and gratitude into that food unknowingly because you're sitting there running the energy to it and so you don't have to have those clear conscious things okay i'm sending this energy back to this plant before it was a seed and as that plant grew as it was harvested as it was processed as it was delivered to the store as it was picked up by the restaurant and made into something for me you know you can you you can step in and use your imagination and be specific about what energies you're running into there but truly all you need is that love and gratitude when you're running the energies so long story basically is is that you can set that beta coil or that ring or whatever <laughs> underneath of your food and just let it sit there and it will bring those energies to it um, it will harmonize everything it'll bring it to a higher spin rate balance ph all the fun stuff but it takes a little bit of time but when you have the beta coil and you are running your love and gratitude with that coil into your food it can all happen instantly so your light your intention your attention will speed up that whole process is what i'm saying so using the beta coil you can do it for the body if you have issues on the body um, you know the, we try not to limit what it is that you can do with the beta coils or any of the tools the beta coils a lot of people will put a tensor field generator on top of it and then it acts as a broadcaster um, some people will put a, a name of a person on there i know my beta coil i have a lot of my favorite crystals in my house sitting on top of my beta coils because it just amplifies broadcasts and just makes them shine bright uh, yeah, the beta coils are pretty amazing. Um, and yeah, so I know you guys all love the woo-woo stuff if you're here. And so yeah, would love to would love to start up something again. And and maybe it's just something that we do like on Wednesdays or something, or one Friday a month where we get together and just do the woo-woo stuff. Um and so let's see. Yeah, uh, the in a question here or a statement about the uh, New Paul's, New York. So I'll be in New Paul's, New York for the American Society of Dowsers Convention that starts on, I believe, the 4th or 5th of June. And so it goes that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, it's over to two o'clock Sunday. I'm actually teaching a half day workshop and that is going to be, um, for energy healers. It's just an energy healers workshop. Basically, um, my, my presentation, my hour long presentation is going to be on light anchors. And that's the presentation I'm giving, I believe on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we'll be do doing that half day workshop and we'll be utilizing light anchors, but we're going to learn how to do distance work 
um, basically the healing work for ourselves and how we hold space for another, how we can affect physical reality through imagination, visualization, intention from the heart space. I always tell the story of how my sister Brenda, if I get a rib out, I'll text her and I can feel her rib, my rib being pushed back into place before she even reads the text. Um, you know, it, it's just that healer aspect of her. And so, and that's kind of what we're going to do. I, I've always imagined us getting into that whole concept of working with our healer aspect and our other aspects in creation as we step in to be conscious creators in this planet. Um, that's something that I'd like to do an advanced course on with that soul alchemy class on twistedsage.vhx.tv is to do an advanced course on that. I just haven't been ready to embody that and to teach that um, on creating soul aspects, beneficial soul aspects. Because on the soul alchemy class, we were clearing the soul aspects that we had created through lifetimes for duality experience in bringing those all in as wisdom. So that is basically taking all of your lifetimes, distilling the light and information, bring them in as wisdom so that instead of a fractured being, you become more of a diamond of facets that you become a whole and completeness. And instead of having all these fraction fractals of you, um, these fractured pieces of you everywhere, we're bringing it all together as a whole. And then you are like this beautiful diamond with all these facets. And this is the multidimensionality of us that we're really stepping into is becoming a multifaceted single whole being instead of this fractured thing that we are in this fractured entire creation that we live in, which is duality. And so that's too is a part of what this beautiful book talks about is about how we came through, we fractured and how right now we're stepping back into wholeness, into sovereignty. And when we step into sovereignty, then we can all come together as sovereign soul beings and it just shifts everything. Oh, sorry, I'm getting down rabbit holes. Um, Jennifer, thank you for putting up the link here to the American Society of Dowsers. Um, and yes, yeah, so the, the new horizontal ascension chamber will be in New York. That's where we're going to uh, first set this up at is, is in New York. And we're still working out the details of the American Society of Dowsers. And I'm hoping that... They'll let me, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But one way or another, we will have the chamber there. The, traditionally, when we bring the Ascension Chambers to the so so American Society of Dowsers, to the Dowsing Convention, we have to have it in the healing room and charge for sessions and all that fun stuff. And I'm hoping that they're stepping out of that paradigm and just allowing us to have that chamber there for free to allow people just to come and go to it for free. So if you are in the region of, of New Paul's, New York, there at the SUNY campus, um, the vendor area is free. You don't have to pay to go to the vending area. And that is where I intend to have that chamber at. So anybody can come there for free and utilize that chamber. So that's our intentions. And how will the chamber differ from the pyramid? So basically the the pyramids are our fifth generation of the ascension chambers the ascension pyramids are and so they they've it, it's been a progression for obviously for what they do and and the structures that they look how they look now this horizontal chamber was our um i think that was our third generation yeah, I think the, the horizontal chamber that we created was like our third generation chamber. We created it for the, um, to take to Albuquerque, New Mexico for the um, Tesla technology convention. That was where we very first um, brought that one to. Now, then there's been, then we had the 60 degree sitting chamber and then we had the, um, the Ascension pyramid chambers. So now then this horizontal chamber, so every time we build something new, we build it on the energetics of the old. 
So basically this horizontal chamber is going to basically do everything that all the chambers have done, all the tools will do, but it is going to be something a lot more. Um, you can't really say what all it is. Brendan and I have already sat down and worked with the etheric templates of this chamber. And so we still have more work to do with it. And then once we have it physically created, we'll even be doing more fine tuning and refinement to it. So I can't really say what all it's doing besides everything that all the chambers have done to it prior, everything that all the tools do. But again, I really feel that is going to step us into a new space and place to where we are overriding that part of us that says, no, I want to hold on to my suffering or I want to hold on to this experience because I feel it is still serving me because I love to suffer or whatever, whatever the reason is, the very core reason, not your mental human reason for, because the, the human usually is like, okay, yeah, no, I don't want this shit. I don't, you know, I don't want to participate in, in this kind of creation anymore of, of all this stuff. I want to, I want the joy and the abundance in my life and in all the good things. But yet there is still a part of us that holds on to wanting to have that experience and which is not wrong. So you guys, uh, the human is the experiential part of our soul. And that is what we're doing here. We're not here to make ourselves better or brighter or anything. We are here to simply have the experience, good, bad, ugly, beautiful, otherwise. But it is allowing us right now in this new time to actually choose what we want to have that experience of. Do we want to experience this whole ascension process as being tough and painful? Shit, that's what I did for a long time. That's what I, I think that's what I've done for five years is I chose to have it really tough and painful. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm done with that. You know, as of last September, everything really shifted for me. And, and I just finally said, no, you know, I, I, it's not the way I want it anymore. I want to experience, I want this experience to not be tough and painful. I want this experience to be joyful, abundant, loving, kind um, to myself. And so we are all here, like I said last week, put your foot down with your soul, choose your experience. And that is really what we want to do is we want to choose our experience to be something a lot, a lot more better, more better. Um, can you create the chamber energy into the pyramids? I don't know yet. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be, um, I imagine that once we create the new chamber, that energetic will probably be updated into the pyramids most likely. Um, but again, we're still in the creation phases of this chamber. I, I do feel like once we get this chamber created, this new one, this version 6.0, that it will allow us to bring a new energy into the tools. And anytime we bring a new energy into the tools, it always goes into the pyramids. So, you know, we've been talking about, about creating that there's this new energy coming in and we've been trying to figure out how to get a hold of it. And basically, you know, traditionally, we've been able to find this new energy, bring it into the tools, and then we start to play with it and embody it and utilize that energy. And then we embody it. We, we entrain to it. We, we hold that field in that energy. So that's not so with this particular new energy that's coming in. It is Brendan and I, it's making us embody this new light because there's a new light. And this is really what the purpose of creation is, is to create this new light. And that is what we are doing as humans. It is that space between, it is that place, that blank canvas. It is divinity. Um, it is where this new light is being fostered, which has just recently come through with this new opening that came through in March. I mean, it, it's, it's the taking off the box. And as we take off that box, that filter, that, that veil between us and who we really are, it is allowing a new light to be fostered here on the planet within each and every one of us. And it's slow and it's gentle and it harmonizes with all of creation. Um, and so anyway, it's that space. It's also that field to help foster that light 
which is what I feel we're putting into the chamber, which is that new energy that we've been looking for to put into these rings, simply taking all the steps of everything that we've done before of all the clearing, connecting, harmonizing, integrating, releasing all the stuff into one field, one space, one ring. That's my intention is to take all of those hard steps that I've taken and put it into this space to where somebody else doesn't have to take those hard steps that they can step into this space with grace and ease. And that's true how we've seen all these tools working throughout time as we've been in this progression is, is that every tool builds upon itself so that when you grab the wisdom ring, you don't have to go through all the steps of every tool that we've created before there to do that release and integration work to bring in your light more. Um, anyway, that's more for the woo woo side, I guess. Um, let's see. Will we be taking the new pyramid to the Denver Body, Mind, Spirit Expo? And again, it'll be actually a, a table version that we're creating for this new chamber. Um, and the pyramid, again, was just, it was the first time we had made the pyramids in our Ascension Chambers. Um, prior to that, they've been like a 13-foot tall tower. One of them is a 60-degree table uh, or chair. One of them is actually that, that table. Um, and then we come to the pyramid. But um, we'll, we'll definitely be taking the, the, new, the new chamber. We're going to definitely be taking it around to places. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do body, mind, spirit anymore. Valerie, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I just have a few events left here that are on the books. Uh, one of them is the South Dakota Yoga Festival here in Spearfish, South Dakota. And that one is also in June. Um, doing a thing in August down in Aztec, New Mexico, an outdoor event. We'll get all this put up onto our twistedsage.com events page once we get our twistedsage.com menu sorted out because there's not much of a menu up there for all of our other stuff. If you want to access any of the old web pages, go to twistedsagestudios.com. twistedsagestudios.com is currently just what we're using for all of our old stuff. So if you want to go in and look at any of the information on the tools or the um, events page, any of that, twistedsagestudios.com will take you to where you can find those event pages. And um, let's see, and then the other event we're doing is one in las vegas nevada on 11 11 of this year we will have a large new pyramid and yeah we'll probably have a new energy yeah we're gonna have a new energetic pyramid coming to vegas and it is going to be inside of the luxar the giant black pyramid in vegas and so we are actually gonna have um yeah our new giant pyramid inside of the Luxar, inside of the chapel at the Luxar, which is the giant black pyramid in Vegas. We've done a lot of energy work at that place over the years. So anyway, that'll be a good one on 11-11. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for the questions. And um, yeah, I love the idea of doing some woo-woo stuff as a matter of fact, hey, do you guys want to do something real quick? All right. Here we go. Anybody who wants to jump into this meditation, you're welcome to. Um, I felt like I kind of needed to do this, but I wasn't sure if I was going to hold the space here today. So we're going to we're gonna play. So anybody who doesn't want to play in the woo-woo stuff, um, thank you for being here. And anybody who wants to jump into this meditation, we'll see if we can hold this together. Okay, a little background. Been dealing with some shoulder stuff for a few months. And I wasn't too worried about it. It was pre March 22nd, you know, of the of that opening. And I was like, okay, well, 
you know, our new way of working with these things is not fighting it, of allowing your light to come in and release it. And I, you know, after that opening, I was like, wow, damn, it's still here. And I've just been patient with it. Well, it's been a really interesting thing because at first, you know, all I could describe, there's just a lot of stuff going on with muscles. And, and I think it's implants, even though I was like, well, geez, I, nah, implants is not in my, my reality anymore. So why are these affecting me? I've released that. And anyway, I finally came to Brenda the other day, this last week. And I was like, okay, I'm ready. Let's, can you help me do something with it? And she was kind of getting implants too, but implants are again, we are that multifaceted being and we can have our attention into a higher vibration place of where we are healthy and abundant and all the good stuff. Kind of like I have this little sunspot at times when I am in just a really dense emotionally low, just, you know, just not just, you know, kind of down this little sunspot comes out on my face and it appears. And as soon as I am able to step up in frequency and vibration and consciousness and light, and, and when I hold that, it disappears, it's gone. And we've noticed that with these different physical things throughout the years too. And especially, you know, more and more as time goes on that we notice that if we can hold this higher vibrational space that we step out of whatever that issue was and you really notice this with creation with life situations you know and i've described it before i think it was on december i don't even remember what year 21 i think that we did a meditation of, of the zero point of the soul and you can go to the 50 questions friday and read through there there's a zero point of the soul meditation we did where basically we just raised our frequency and vibration to where we we step out of a certain creation we step out of a certain creation and we hold this higher field so then um you know as i described it in that pre-meditation is is that if you're just having this bad day you know and you're you're just kind of, uh, you know, and your your a book drops on your toe where all this weird shit happens that you're like, man, you know, and it just makes things worse and things compile. And we all kind of know that when we get into that real shit mood and how things just keep happening because we are drawing that in, that is a that is our level of vibratory creation. And so when we step up in vibratory, we step up into a higher creation. And so that is what we were trying. That's what I've been trying to do with, with that shoulder is to step up into a higher vibration creation. Now, this isn't, um, you know, sticking your head in the sand. This isn't spiritual bypassing any of that stuff. This is a true reality of how I feel that things operate is, is that when we step into a different facet, a different, um, vibration, uh, for lack of better way to describe it, then everything in creation matches that higher vibration. You know, very, very simple concept. Unless you're, you know, unless you're living in it, <laughs> you know, as we all know, being human. So anyway, um, with that, in what I was talking about in the beginning with that scar tissue, that basically, um, it refracts your light differently. It, it, it's, it, it doesn't, it doesn't allow that higher creation to come through. Um, it distorts it. So to clear that distortion, when I asked Brenda the other day, and we sat there with this, she saw this space of nothing. She's like, okay, there's nothing there. There's nothing. And she was having a hard time even talking because her mind went to nothing. In this space of nothing, all I could do is just simply just be because you can't direct, you can't put this space of nothing there. It's like you can't even allow it. You just, it just, it just is. The space of nothing just is. And simply we just held the space of nothing. We just sat there. And the space of nothing existed there. This is the blank canvas. This is the space where 
the distortions of creation aren't there and you hold that space of nothing and then you allow your light, your consciousness to pattern the energy into that highest and best, into that, that joy, that peace, that abundance, that health, that everything that you truly deeply want. So it's that space of nothing that whole, it just holds a blank canvas. So here we go, you guys. This is what we're going to do is we're going to go into the heart and you're going to think of what it is that you want to bring this space of nothing to so that your consciousness can repattern that creation without the filters, the blocks, the distortions. So think of what it is that you wish and then let it go. Now let's go into the heart, closing the eyes, taking that breath from earth into the heart, allowing in that breath of creation into the heart of soul of you. That third breath, you just drop into the heart space. Be in peace and stillness, trusting your light. And we're just going to bring that nothing space in. Stay out of it. Don't think about it. We're not definitely not going to try to fix or heal anything. We're just going to be, so just be in the space of nothing will come in. Just be, don't even look at it. Just let your mind come into the space of nothing as well. It's just an empty space, a blank canvas. It is your divinity. And your light comes in and begins to rebuild and repattern the energy into a new creation. From here on, it is simply you allowing this new creation to be. This new creation, this new patterning supersedes any of the distortions, any of the other. And it may hold for a little while. And then the old patterns may start to come back in, but it is okay. That is where you go back into that space of allowing the new patternings of creation to be. Not worrying about it, not projecting it. Just allowing new creation to be. Forgetting about the old patterns, the old limitations, letting them go. Beautiful. And with that, I bid you a great day. We'll see you again.